Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Planes, Trains, and Comic Books channel. My name's Matt, and today we will be reviewing Refrigerator Full of Heads, number one. And before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff, it really helps me out and lets me know what you guys want to see more of. So, with that being said, let's get into this wacky thing. All right, we see the cover here. Pretty much says exactly all you need to know. Refrigerator Full of Heads. This is actually the sequel to a comic that came out last year called basket full of heads uh which was under the hill house comics brand under dc so dc struck a deal with joe hill who is the son of stephen king uh to write a bunch of horror books all of which were pretty much fantastic they're all great check all those out basket full of heads was one of them that was kind of a fun interesting title and i guess that one was so popular or was popular enough that they did a second follow-up and just a little breakdown about what the first series was about basically there's an axe it's like a norse axe it's magical and when you chop someone's head off with it, their head stays alive uh, so it can talk and everything. But hijinks ensue, let's put it that way. As you see, this one starts in Lauren Valley, California, November 1983. And apparently this is before the events of the rest of the comic. Uh, looks like there's a robbery going on. Uh, some people get woke up and, uh, and their whole family gets taken into this, uh, I guess, collector's room where they have all this collector's memorabilia. These uh, robbers are looking for a specific dagger. Um, it is the dagger of Fenrir, who is a Norse wolf god, uh, and supposedly the dagger, when you stab someone with it, it like traps themselves inside of their body. It basically paralyzes them. They can't move or talk or anything, but um, they don't die either. They eventually find it, and they test it on the old man first, and it seems to work because he gets paralyzed right away. And basically, once that happens, the family freaks out. It doesn't end up well for them, let's say. Each of them basically end up getting killed in a certain way, certain horrible ways, to where there's just a crime scene left with dead bodies. Then we cut to now, which is in July of 1984, which takes place, I believe, after the events of Basketful of Heads. And this is on Brody Island, Maine. Now, this was a little bit of an interesting throw-off to me, uh, because we're introduced to this couple that's staying here. Um, they're just uh, like looking for vacation time, I guess. But as they're getting introduced to this cabin that they're going to stay at, the guy starts talking about a shark that's been attacking people and how the chief of police, Wade, tried to go after it, but his boat blew up. It's kind of like, since it's called Brody, Maine, I'm like, is it, this is like an allusion to Jaws, I'm assuming, because there's, it says there's a giant 20-foot great white stalking the area. So that's interesting. They just threw me for a loop because Jaws was basically in this, which is not what I expected. This couple, they seem a little odd to the uh, guy who's renting them the cabin. He is like, oh, what do you do to the guy? And he's like, oh, I'm the stay-at-home whatever. And, you know, it's 1984, so the guy's like, stay at home. And she's a writer, so he's like, okay, whatever. To her, but, like, the guy, he's like, you're, so you're basically useless, man. But it turns out there must be something else other than what they're saying because it seems like they're here on uh, maybe undercover or looking for some specific the guy starts taking down license plates of bikers he says he's just taking notes on the bikes because he's a enthusiast of motorcycles apparently he was just writing down the license plates and the guy saw that so they're trying to beat him up he's actually able to fight the big guy off a big pursuit happens and they chase him to the edge of a cliff and he has to jump off into the water and when he does he sees something glowing in the water as he's getting out of the water still on the run from these bikers she pulls up in her in the truck that they have, and she's like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? And he's like, I saw it. I saw the thing glowing. It's got to be it. So these people obviously know what they're looking for. They're there for a specific reason, and they're not there for what they told the guy they're renting the house from. So they show up that night, and they go down to get the axe. And if you see next to the axe, there's a head that's still gurgling and talking. And then out of nowhere... They get attacked by basically a Jaws shark. And I'm going to stop there because I don't want to spoil everything. But yeah, this is a pretty fun issue. <laughs> I didn't expect Jaws to be in there, which was interesting. I mean, obviously, it's not really Jaws. I can't say it's Jaws. But the, the idea of it's Brody Island and it's in Maine and it's 20, uh, you know, 20 foot long, great white. That sounds like Jaws to me. And I also didn't realize there was going to be another uh, mystical Norse weapon in this one. So we have two mystical weapons in play now. We have the, the axe so that cuts off people's heads. And we have this Fenrir dagger that uh, makes people paralyzed when they get stabbed with it. So uh, pretty interesting. I got to say, I mean, this isn't like high art or anything, but it was fun. You know, like this, this is what I want in some of these comics. You just want to read like a fun horror comic that pays off. And this had pretty much everything you want. It had blood. It had guts. It had like an interesting mystery going on. 
and I didn't even say, but the, the series is written by Rio Ewers, so fun series, well written. And then uh, the art is pretty good. It's by Tom Fowler. I mean, it's exactly what you want. You know, it shows uh, everything you need in the comics. So uh, had a pretty fun time with this. This is just good, fun comics. I, I would give this one a three and a half. I want to continue reading it. I had more fun than just an average comic. Uh, and like I said, it's not high art or anything. Not yet, at least. Maybe it gets crazier and gets to a point where I'm like, whoa, I didn't expect that. But um, <laughs> you never know with these. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, definitely check this one out if you like horror or you like any kind of uh, Norse mythology or things like that, too, because that's in there. So, yeah, if you're looking for something this week that's a little different, check that one out. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.